Good morning, YouTube. Well, we're going to try and make a shorter video today. Brock's not here to film a half an hour's worth of footage, so we should be able to do that. Um, we had a meeting this morning with our crop insurance agent. Uh, we can talk about crop insurance a little bit. In fact, maybe that's what we'll do today. But um, we do buy insurance on our crops, and basically the way that it works is that um, we have... We report our yields every year to the county FSA, Farm Service Agency, and they use those uh, yields every year to build up what we call an APH, or an average production history. And uh, they use 10 years worth of data to come up with what our average yields are. And then we can use that to kind of uh, buy insurance in case we have a bad year. So there are different levels of insurance that we can buy, 75%, uh, 80%, 85%. There's a lot of other little options and things that are um, add-ons, I guess you could say, what they call this SCO and ECO and uh, prevent plant coverage and buy-ups and trend yield adjustments. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, and I tend to be fairly... I don't know what the right word is here. I'm not a big fan of crop insurance. It's not my favorite thing. I wish that it wasn't uh, something that people could use and take advantage of as much as they do. Um, that said, we do buy it. Uh, it's kind of a, a, it's a nice to have necessary protection that I wish we didn't have to have kind of thing. But we don't go crazy with it. Uh, we are buying just basic 80% coverage and uh, that's the cheapest, biggest bang for your buck kind of thing. Um, and it gives us a fair bit of protection. So um, what it does is basically, let's, I'm just gonna throw random numbers out because, or, or round numbers, I guess, because I don't know what our exact ones are right off the top of my head without pulling the paperwork back out. But um, let's just say that our APH, that average production history that we have uh, for corn in the Michigan County that we farm in is 185 bushels per acre. Uh, so when we buy an 80% coverage, that means we take 80% of that 185, do the math, figure out whatever that is, and uh, that's the amount of bushels that the crop insurance is guaranteeing us. So if we produce less than 80% of our APH, they will make up the difference to get us back up to uh, uh, that 80% level, not to whole, but to within 80%. Uh, the other component of it that is maybe a bigger factor, especially this year, is uh, the price loss. So we're actually guaranteeing revenue and not just yield in bushels. And so with spring prices that are being set right now, they take an average of the grain prices for fall every day in February. And right now that guarantee price is like 1468 I think it was on beans and 586 on corn those are really 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 high good numbers and so what that means is that and it's still fluctuating a little bit but basically um, if we produce 80 percent of our yield and the price in the fall is still 586 we'll get nothing but anything less than that yield or prices and it triggers a payment now, if we produce 100% of our average, we have 185 bushel average corn next fall, and the price has gone from 586 down to $4. I don't know what the exact numbers would be in there, but that would be enough to trigger a payment as well. So it kind of gives us some protection against the grain markets tanking and um, ensures that we'll at least be able to pay our bills this fall. So. Uh, that's what we worked on this morning. Uh, one other note on that. Yes, the crop insurance program is federally subsidized. That is the biggest portion of farm subsidies that any farm gets, especially for us because we don't take much of uh, anything else or haven't in the last couple of years. Um, and so uh, I don't know what percentage they, they cover of that, but we do have to pay for crop insurance coverage. Um, and then the government subsidizes the rest of it. And that is the, the federal government's way and their program to say that this is how we're going to, to ensure that our farmers are taken care of and that um, we have a cheap, 
readily available food supply across this country. And so uh, that's that's the approach they've taken. You can agree with it or not. I tend to wish all those subsidies would just go away and people would have to stand on their own two feet and separate out the people that are good farmers from the people that uh, are skating by on insurance and other stuff. But that makes me mean and a jerk. So I guess I shouldn't say that. Anyway, I will say... It was very nice to have crop insurance there in 2019 when we had so much rain in the spring that we couldn't get stuff planted uh, because there is a prevent plant component of that where the crop insurance companies basically say, if you don't get your crops planted by this date, we're gonna pay you a reduced portion, slightly over half of that revenue guarantee to just not plant anything because they're so worried about how poor those crops are gonna be uh, and having a bigger payout in the fall that they'll, they'll buy it out and then we can save the expenses of uh, actually growing the crop, most of them, some of them. And um, that was nice to have there because that was a, it was a rough spring. And if we had not had that prevent plant coverage, we would have had to, um, we would have had to do things that weren't necessarily the right way to do things and planting crops into conditions that they should not have been planted in just because we had to do something. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it worked out. So nice to have. Like I said, I still kind of not a fan. So we are going to do some work in the shop this afternoon. We've got uh, some cleaning up to do on that big tractor that's in there. So that's my plan. Uh, however, I need to make a Menards run and drop some stuff off at the mailbox here. And then I need to run to the old house and do a little bit of stuff. So a few errands to run, then we'll be back in the shop this afternoon. Can you guys... Can you guys see the stuff sticking out the back of the truck? Closets, shelves, supports, organized stuff. That was an expensive little trip. Plus I had to stop at the old house and do some stuff with some furniture, grab a couple of things. Uh, Maddie has decided that tonight will be a good night to clean out some more stuff because it's not gonna snow tonight like it is tomorrow. So we're gonna go over there tonight. It's now two o'clock already because I'm super efficient today. And we're gonna clean a tractor, so. I'm going to fire up the power washer and we're going to do some power washing. I'm going to slightly reposition this tractor. Mostly I want to bend it like this so that I can get in there better. And then we'll bend it the other way once we're done here. I also need to clean the cab out. We'll get all the stuff out of there maybe this afternoon. Maybe I should do that now before I get it all wet. Nah, we'll do it later. Um, but I've got that little Milwaukee vacuum, battery vacuum. Uh, it's down in my house. I've been using it for cleaning out, cleaning up stuff around the house, construction stuff and carpet. Yeah, all that. Um, but that's what I bought it for was doing cabs. So we're going to get that back down here and probably work on that tomorrow. Ooh, did I run that hose over? I did, but I didn't hit the handle. That was close. Didn't know it was there. Dad has been doing some... Uh, tile laying floor tile in his house in his basement and so he comes out here and rinses his buckets out and stuff and had the hose laying there anyway i'm gonna get suited up we'll set up a gopro do a little time lapse you know you guys have seen that a hundred thousand times but we'll do it again anyway well okay then maybe we won't be running the power washer our hose just blew great that hose isn't even that old like we just put it on a year or two ago okay well now what do I do? Let's see if we got one. Huh, great. All right, so I went and looked around and we don't have this particular hose anywhere. We do have some power washer hoses, but you can see there, you can't because it's not focused, but yep, it's, it's, it's broken, rusted through right there at the crimp. Whether that could be cut off on a new end crimped on here, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't use any of the other hoses because of this end. It's got this fancy, swivel fitting on there and so yeah i guess we're not going to power wash today uh, i will try and get that one fixed tomorrow hopefully in the morning or go to the place where we buy our power washer stuff and buy a new hose which i'm not very happy about because this one like i said is not very old but uh, i'm going to get it off of there and wound up and i'll take the fitting off of that and i wonder Hmm, I wonder what the fitting is underneath there. That can't be the end that's crimped onto it. Maybe I'll try and diagnose a little farther. Yeah, so this does come apart there, and I don't need this whole end. I need this end, but this is still a relatively unique connector, 
as it's a male swivel. Usually swivels are the female end. So none of my other hoses have that connector or any swivel at all. And uh, means it would be pretty difficult to put it on there. Not worth messing with it just to, yeah. We're gonna attempt to fix this hose when we get a new end crimped on that side. And if we can't do that, we'll just buy a new one because we do use that hose. It's for our other power washer. We have a gas powered cold water one. It's an outdoor only kind of thing in the summer. So it's, I'm not desperate enough to power wash to hook that one up. Let me tell you. Got the quick coupler off of there so we can take that tomorrow. We'll put a couple of tools away. Ah, uh, look what I found over here, guys. Look, look, look. Do you see that? Do you see it? Do you see that? That's not mine. Half full. Brock. Now oh, that's just wasteful. Tell you what. All right, so since we can't power wash today, cab it is. We're gonna clean that out. Move this out of the way. We'll start getting all the stuff out of there, the accumulated tools, empty water bottles, all that good stuff. And then we'll start actually cleaning, vacuuming, wiping everything down. We've got a jacket, a cell phone charger, rags, empty water bottles. Oh, most of that stuff probably stays. Oh, that's not too bad. Dad's pocket knife. Some disc parts. Yeah, we can clean her out. Well, there's all the stuff. We got a brush and some Windex. So I'll brush the floor off here real quick. I just I got an email from our um, crop consultant. They're uh, wanting to get a list together of fields that we are going to um, take soil samples on this summer. And so I'm going to sit down and work on that real quick. I might have to go in and talk to Dad. But then we got to go get our vacuum. to get this all over myself. He's going to clean up on the floor out there than it is in here. I like leaving those brushes and all the tractor equipment so that we can sweep the floors out periodically throughout the growing season. I had, uh, had a couple of them. There's an old one, but I bought a few more so that I can stash one in everything that we own, basically. That'll, that'll be handy. So, all right, let's go talk about crop consulting or soil test, testing a little bit. Okay, so here's a little, yeah, the list of our fields. And it has the dates of what year and when they were soil tested, how many acres, all that stuff. I went through and wrote down what crop we have going into those fields this year. And then they had put a list or an X through on which fields they felt that we should be testing this year. Mostly it was anything that hasn't been tested, didn't get tested last year. Um, some of those I don't wanna do. Uh, for example, these two fields here, well, they're going to corn this year. And we generally don't soil sample when fields are corn, we soil sample when they're going to corn. And the reason this one was not in 21, wasn't sampled last year, even though it was a wheat field, is because we had done it in 2020, and it just, the, this is still dealing with prevent plant year, is what it is, and the crappy crop scheduling stuff that happened because of that. Um, so we're trying to get back into our normal rotation and swing of things and how we do it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and have them skip sampling that one this year because it's going to be corn. We'll sample it next year when there are soybeans there, um, most likely. And then... You know, we've got a couple of other ones that are going to be wheat or that, well, like that one is wheat, but we sampled it last year. So do we sample it again this year because it's wheat going to corn next year? I don't know. I want to ask dad about that. And then there's a couple other ones like here that it is corn going to be corn this year, but it will be, no, that's not right. Yeah. Okay. Like this one here is going to be soybeans this year, but it will be wheat next year. Uh, so do we sample it this year ahead of the wheat crop and then again when it is wheat or do we skip the soybean year and just sample ahead of the, uh, the corn crop when it is wheat? So I've got most of them figured out there. I need to go talk to dad, see what he thinks on some of this stuff. He always handled the soil tests and sampling and the fertility stuff. 
up until we started dealing with uh, nesters here uh, with our crop consultant. That was in 2017, so we've been with them for almost five years now. Um, my dad did a really good job. He went to school for crop and soil science, and he had a job working for a lab taking soil samples when he got out of college. He knows what he's doing. The issue became when it came time to make the results into maps so that we could variable rate our stuff and uh, time and being able to get it done. And uh, he did a really good job with it. It was just the technology is advanced to the point and we've got so much going on that it, it made sense for us to hire somebody else to do it, to create these variable rate maps. So that's what we do and they do a fantastic job. Um, we just got to get a list together of what we need and and uh, what fields we want them to sample and, and make it make sense. So anyway, I'm gonna go talk to dad. We're gonna figure this out and then I'm gonna go get my vacuum and we're gonna finish cleaning that tractor. Well, now that I've gotten all the dirt swept out of here, mm -hmm. we'll vacuum out the rest. This little thing is nice and handy. It's a whole lot easier to get up here than the uh, big shot backs. Ooh. And it's pretty powerful. Nice. All right. Now the rest we get to do with rags. Well, I got all the side consoles and stuff like that wiped down and everything, and now I'm wiping down the floor. I do need to do windows yet. I don't know if I'm ready to do windows because we got to wash outside yet, and I know I could do the inside of the windows, but yeah. So I'm using this John Deere all-purpose cleaner, and I know, wear the green underwear. Do everything John Deere, but... They deliver it to me. It's not any more expensive than anything else, and it actually does work pretty good. So it foams up pretty good, but it kind of, the bubbles dissolve quickly. And then I'm just using this brush and kind of brushing it out so I can get down in the grooves a little bit better. In that corner. And then using my rag, to soak it up after that and it does a pretty nice job a few finishing touches always get the door seals they make a huge difference in how it looks good enough all right well i took a few more minutes to update uh this sheet i got it filled out i'm gonna scan that in the morning and send it back i also had to do some work on that computer uh, we're updating our record keeping software and stuff, so I was downloading that. Some days it feels like I don't work much that I film and put on camera. And like, you watched me clean out a cab today. That's all you saw, really. But I did do a lot other than that and the run to town and errands and stuff chewed up a bunch of time. So, sorry. It's just the way today goes. But uh, my wife is here. She's dropping off the boys. We're heading into our old house to keep cleaning some stuff up, so I got to go get our trailer and head that way. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments on today's video, leave them down below and we'll see you again tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me. I'm still trying to get to 20,000. Like we're, we're, we're creeping closer, but it's a very slow creep.